What the hell is Red Bull playing at by parking its most promising F1 ready young driver on the sidelines? And is it really the end of the road for them finding him a 2024 race seat when there's still one available somewhere else? Hardly anyone was clamouring for Liam Lawson to get an F1 drive 12 months ago when the AlphaTauri seat that Nick DeVries ended up taking was up for grabs. But after performing so well standing in for an injured Daniel Ricciardo, he's got real momentum behind him and there's a quite considered outcry that Red Bull's done him dirty by overlooking him for 2024. Being in the right place at the right time is critical for a driver to get into F1 and that alignment just hasn't quite been there for Lawson who's had a good but not stunning career in Red Bull's junior ranks. But he's grabbed a shock chance in F1 with both hands, impressing AlphaTauri with his calm demeanour, quick adaptation to the car and assured performance in races. He's been classified ahead of Yuki Tsunoda in all three Grand Prix they've both finished, while his two-point score in Singapore has lifted AlphaTauri's hopes of avoiding last place in the Constructors' Championship. Okay, the comparison against Tsunoda has been flattered by circumstances and the jury's still out on just how quick Lawson is. But in Japan, Lawson bested Tsunoda in a straight fight and at the very least, he's made a great case for being given a bigger chance. Unfortunately, that performance at Suzuka came about 30 hours or so after the door had been publicly closed on a 2024 AlphaTauri seat, with Ricardo and Tsunoda now the confirmed driver pairing for next year. Red Bull Racing team boss and CEO Christian Horner says Lawson couldn't have done any more to further his case. If you believe that, it tells you everything you need to know. He never really stood a chance of getting that seat, as Red Bull was already pretty set on what it wanted to do. The decision to give Ricardo a 2024 race seat and retain Sonoda seems to have been a relatively straightforward one, even though Lawson's impressive standing performances presented a potential complication. Sonoda's renewal may have been speculated over as it dragged on, but it was only ever in doubt if Honda decided not to keep backing him, which always looked extremely unlikely. He's performed well this season, more than justifying the enduring faith of both Honda and Red Bull, and that meant retaining Honda's financial support seemed a formality. All the while Red Bull Racing and AlphaTauri continue to use Honda engines, and all the while Sonoda drives like he has for most of 2023, Honda's likely to keep funding Sonoda's seat to the tune of several million dollars a year. Even Ricardo has indirect benefits in that vein, as he is commercial gold dust. Lawson has no such sweetener attached. Picking between them came down to what Red Bull wanted. Sonoda keeps Honda happy, brings in some money, and has upped his game, so does actually deserve an F1 seat. Ricardo's CV speaks for itself, and he ticks a lot of other boxes. Aside from the commercial appeal, Ricardo's performance was satisfactory in the two races he managed before breaking his hand, he offers experience against Sonoda's youth, and it's extremely convenient to have him in the car and get a full season of scrutiny just in case he's an option to replace Sergio Perez at Red Bull Racing in 2025. The matter of experience shouldn't be underestimated, as AlphaTauri wants a blend of youth and experience as part of its new identity. Whatever this team ends up being called next year, Red Bull demands that it becomes more competitive and it will have a closer technical alliance with Red Bull Racing than before to achieve that, but the drivers are also key. Rightly or wrongly, Red Bull doesn't believe Lawson offers enough of a pure performance upside to offset what he lacks compared to the other contenders. So the out and out best combination in terms of experience, ability and financial sense in the short term is Ricardo and Sonoda. While there are still doubts over just how good Lawson really is, clearly his stand-in performances in tricky circumstances merit a chance at a full-time race seat. And a potential loan move to Williams is the only alternative Red Bull has to find him one for 2024. Since probably Lawson's first full weekend at Monza, there's been an awkward contrast between his performances and Logan Sargent's at Williams, and it's prompted plenty of speculation about a potential loan move. It would seem to be in everyone's interest. Sargent struggled and Lawson has poked a big hole in the rookies need more time argument. Williams might need a driver and Red Bull has one that deserves a seat but hasn't been picked for any of the four that it has. Deciphering whether either is serious about exploring a loan move is quite tricky based on some contrasting recent public comments. At the most recent race in Japan, Williams team boss James Vowles didn't actually rule out taking Lawson on loan if Williams chooses not to retain Sargent. He outright stated it would be interesting to see where Red Bull goes with its decision making for the two AlphaTauri seats, given the surplus of drivers, hinting that whoever was left over could be on the market. Well, not long after Val said that, we discovered it's Lawson who's been left the odd one out, although he has been named Red Bull's reserve driver for 2024. At the same time, Red Bull team boss Christian Horner indicated that Red Bull would be amenable to sending Lawson somewhere if a seat became available. 
But in the wake of Red Bull's announcement that Alpha Tauri's driver lineup for 2024 was finally settled and Lawson would just be a reserve driver, the messaging has been quite clear. Williams might not be an option after all. Lawson says he is a Red Bull driver and all the Red Bull seats are taken, while Horner says that Williams probably won't want a driver on loan for just one season. If you go by what's been stated publicly, it doesn't look that promising. If that's true, and it might not be given how these things can work behind the scenes, then it makes little sense. There are only two reasons we can think of that would explain why this is the case. The only one that reflects well on Red Bull is that Lawson's been given a year on the sidelines because he also has a contractual guarantee of a 2025 race drive in either of Red Bull's teams. You'd certainly hope Red Bull has a concrete plan in place, because otherwise, why else would it sacrifice a young driver's hard-earned career momentum with this run of great standing performances as a debutante? The other factor is that as Horner suggested, Williams may not want a one-year loan deal as it would find itself in the same position 12 months from now, needing a new driver. When it was discussing borrowing Oscar Piastri from Alpine before that took a dramatic series of twists, it was on the basis of being a two-season loan. Now there was a break clause within that that meant Alpine could have recalled Piastri after one season if it wanted to, which means Williams was open to a deal that meant it could have lost a driver after just one season after all, but the point is it ideally wanted a two season loan. Red Bull clearly doesn't want to give Lawson up for more than one season because it almost certainly wants to slot him in for 2025 in place of either Ricardo or Sonoda at Alpha Tauri. And it isn't unfair for Williams to think that a short term sergeant replacement has little appeal either. Of course, there is always the possibility that Red Bull simply doesn't care enough about Lawson spending a year on the sidelines to think a Williams move is worth exploring, or that Williams just doesn't think Lawson would be an upgrade. We think if either of those are true, then it would be borderline negligent from those organisations. Red Bull shouldn't just leave a driver to rot on the bench just for the sake of having a handy reserve and flexibility with its lineup during 24 or 25, and Williams can't really be taken seriously if it doesn't at least evaluate the best available alternatives to Sargent. But even if a loan move isn't immediately on the horizon, there is still time for things to change, as there's likely to be no resolution for a while anyway. We do get the impression that Williams wants Sargent to give them a reason to keep him. It's not a Mick Schumacher Haas situation from last year, for example, where he's the incumbent driver, but desperately unlikely to keep the seat. Sargent is a Williams Driver Academy graduate for starters, and even though he was on that program and put into a race seat before current boss James Vowles took over, that's still something that Vowles takes seriously. At the same time, it's been in Sargent's control for a while, and he still hasn't made a compelling case. And there really is only so many times we can hear it's a tough season for rookies when Piastri is starring at McLaren alongside Lando Norris and Lawson stepped in so impressively. Since Japan, Vowles has made it clear that Williams wants to have Sargent in the car in 24, but it's telling that Williams doesn't want that so badly that it's willing to just confirm him right now. Vowles has also emphasised the need to improve, stating Sargent has clear targets to hit. Williams is probably going to give Sargent until the very last race to change that, meaning he has six Grand Prix to build some momentum, maybe even score a point or two, and just show that he can finally piece together flashes of speed into something meaningful. As we've said for some time, the lack of appealing alternatives helps his case significantly. Aston Martin reserve and 2022 F2 champion Felipe Drogovic seems an outside contender at best. Schumacher wants back on the F1 grid, but seems to have no chance of getting the Williams seat as he's in discussions over an Alpine drive in the World Endurance Championship and continuing as a Mercedes F1 reserve. But while Sargent has struggled to use that to his advantage, Lawson's emergence has thrown an interesting curveball into the mix. The Japanese Grand Prix weekend was almost the ultimate example of Sargent's struggles. He was on a really good lap in qualifying, even if it was only the first run in Q1, and was comparing well to Alex Albon, having built up his pace sensibly on a first trip to a very difficult circuit. But then he failed to piece it together in the most dramatic way possible, by having a heavy crash that gave Williams a big rebuild job, and has probably further set Sargent back with an ongoing car spec discrepancy compared to Albon. Oh, and in that same qualifying segment, Lawson set the fourth fastest time. The consequences of Sargent's struggles are also escalating. Back when he undermined his first Q3 appearance at Zandvoort by crashing, then had another crash in the Grand Prix that wasn't his fault, he lost his upgraded front wing because of a lack of spares, and he hasn't had it back since. Nosing his car into the wall in Singapore, crashing heavily at Suzuka in qualifying, and then clumsily hitting Valtteri Bottas in the race there has only put more pressure on production at Williams, so Sargent's at risk of missing the upgraded front wing for even longer. If there is a tangible performance difference, it needs to be factored into Sargent's situation. 
It may even be feeding into his troubles if he feels under pressure to get closer to Albon in an inferior car and is overdriving as a result. That wouldn't offer much mitigation though and to be fair to Sargent he hasn't used it as an excuse. The bigger issue is that he's added crashes into the mix which gives Williams something else to think about. Sargent's costing the team points and money and not offering enough evidence that there will be a significant step to counter that. If he brings some commercial value to the team, he risks cancelling it out completely through crash damage and lost prize money through a weaker championship position. Albon has consistently proved that this is a much better car than Sargent's making it look. And Albon's had to haul Williams up the Constructors' Championship on his own when Sargent should at least be offering enough to give Williams a buffer in that fight. So while Val says Williams hasn't made any firm decisions, it's clearly weighing things up, and rightly so. Factor in the awkward contrast of Lawson stepping straight in mid-season and immediately performing well elsewhere, and it gives Williams an obvious short-term alternative. While there is no guarantee Lawson would replicate that form next season, if he could, then it would be exactly what Williams needs. That's why we feel it would be daft for Red Bull and Williams to not at least have a conversation about Lawson for 2024. But if neither party really wants to make that work, then Lawson's going to have to settle for exactly what he didn't want, a year on the sidelines and good career momentum wasted.